my friends and welcome to the bench and today I'm going to be going over the basics of airbrushing a plastic model um, I get a lot of questions back and forth I figured I'd do one of these legacy videos where you go back as a reference I'm not gonna go into great massive detail I'm gonna show you how to mix the paint how to spray the kit how to clean the paint out of the gun and uh, end of end of your session cleaning basic stuff I'm not gonna break down the airbrush or any of that um, I'm just going to show you what I use, and I'm going to show you the accessories that I use on a daily basis. This stuff, I can't live without. It's really uh, inexpensive, and uh, you really should have, I personally think, these items I'm going to show you, you should have on your bench. One form or another, I'm going to show you my favorites. They are relatively inexpensive and uh, essential to uh, airbrushing on a daily basis. Um, for this, I'm going to be doing solvent paints. That's lacquer or enamels, acrylic lacquers. Uh, no pure acrylic. That's a separate video. This is just going to be for solvent paints. As a matter of fact, after I go over the brushes, I'll lay out every solvent paint that I have in my inventory. And that's almost, almost every one that's on the market so you guys can see how many are actually out there and what you have to choose from. But uh, for the basics, we're going to be using a double action top trigger type airbrush uh, for the test. And uh, this is one of my favorites. This is a GSI Creos. Rios, Main Japan, uh, to 289. This is a 0.03. This is a 0.3 millimeter needle. That always says it on their brushes. Here is their same model, 0.270, but it's the same model, but it's a 0.2. See it? So it's a two millimeter, 0.2. So 0.3 and above is your standard. Um, if you're going to be doing basic painting of your Gundams car kits, you can get by with a 0.3. 0.3 and higher, 0.5, which is this one. Um, and this one, you can do uh, easy to do bigger areas like a car kit, an airplane kit. Uh, primers are good the bigger the needle you go. But you can start at three. You could probably get everything done with a three. All right. Now this is the basics. You're going to push down to get your air, pull back to get your paint. Down for air, back for paint. And you see it stops. This is a stopper. Some have a stopper. Some don't. You can adjust it, meaning you don't have to pull all the way back. It'll actually stop and let only so much paint out. But once you get good at this, you really don't use them. You use your, your feel of your fingers as how far back you're going to go. This particular airbrush has a MAC valve. You'll see that the Badger doesn't, and this one doesn't anyway. The Extreme Patriot does have one. That's a Patriot 105. That's where you adjust the air, fine-tune it at the front. Uh, that's if you want to dial it down, get some speckling, a little shadowing. But personally, I don't use it that much. But it's an option. It's worth having, you know. And that's the, the cup. This cup doesn't get detached. This doesn't get detached. Their other airbrushes have a detachable br uh, cup. Not that it really matters. Even with my detachable cups, I don't remove them that often. Uh, if you do the proper cleaning, you don't have to. Maybe once or twice a year. Um, these are a quick release. I'll show you that in a second. Here is a trigger type brush, which I just showed you here. This is the same as top push down to get air. And you can feel it stops right here. And then that's where the paint is. So that's just air. It just air will be coming out. Pulling all the way in will be the paint. Same with this. It stops right here. And then there's the paint. You have to see in you know as you're doing it in real life and and on your own you'll you'll feel it. So uh this is a point three, this is a point five. And um it depends on your preference. Triggers are pretty comfortable even though I have a couple I always end up using this more often. Um and you probably get these a little cheaper. These are on sale around between 80 and 90, which is the bargain of a lifetime, to tell you the truth. But this is currently on sale for 100 and um, 100 bucks. And this is a great airbrush, but this pushes a lot of paint. This is for painting cars, primers, and airplane kits. It pushes a lot of paint. This has two kinds of caps. Your standard cone-shaped paint will come out. And this is, if you can see it, here we go. See that little pinhole right there? And there'll be one on the side. See it? right there what that does is I'll put it right here as the air comes out of the nozzle releasing the paint air also goes around and through those little pinholes squishing the paint together because the air is pushing the paint together and let me get this brush this will show it and then the paint comes out like a fan see like they call them fan caps so it's gonna look like that coming out but head-on it will look like this and that's for painting your car bodies mostly because now you got a nice wide angle 
see a nice wide flat and you're going to get the entire car maybe two strokes across and you're covering the whole side of the car with a nice fan shape and that's why I leave that on all the time because uh, that's what I use it for mostly yeah, but this comes with both interchangeable caps great bargain um, if you have two airbrushes it's good to have maybe a 0.5 like this for laying down heavier paints to do bigger cars and, uh, and a, probably a 0.3 uh, are you two to have I would say I collect airbrushes don't go by me I have them all they, uh, you get it becomes an addiction after a while anyway now for my stands this is a basic stand that I use because I can move it around. It's light. It holds three airbrushes. You probably don't need it. See, it has a Mac valve. A lot of them won't hold this, but this one has the cutout to fit the Mac valve. So that is a nice stand to have. These, forget these that you see me placing these on. These things are made by Hobby Mio, and it's been hell to get them. I shouldn't show them, but it's how I keep all my brushes standing up in my videos. Um, I'll let you know when they come back in stock. I want a couple more myself, but these are 15 to 20 bucks. And they're just tough to get. I, I'm looking for another manufacturer. I can't find them. They drive me insane trying to get these in stock. But I will let you guys know when they come back in stock. They work with a quick release end. And by that, I mean... Let me get my quick release valve here, guys. One second. Hold on, guys. It's right behind me. Let me grab it. Sorry, guys. I reached behind me. This is a quick release valve. In a set, you'll get one and one. Some will come with a bunch. Uh, this particular one is an Iwata. I like Iwata um, for, the, for this valve. And Grex makes a real good one, too. I have both. Um, some of the cheaper ones, I've had air leaks in them, so I don't trust them. But this is uh, the Iwata one's only 15 bucks, and the Grex one's uh, 20 bucks or so. I'll put links to them below. And what you do is you get a bunch of extras. See that? And this fits on the end of your hose. This is a standard 1 8 hose. This is the standard hose across the board, except for Badger and Posh. I'll show you in a second. Now what you do is you put this on. This holds the air. Now you can turn on your compressor. No air is going to come out until you push in. And here we go. And there you go. Now it's a quick release. It works great if you have different airbrushes. You're ready to go. It's that fast. You don't have to screw them on every time. It's a really great time saver. Also, when you want to take apart your airbrush at the bench without having to unscrew it, you just pop it. Take it back to your bench if you want to work on it at your bench. And um, it's invaluable. I use it. I bought all extras to fit on the quick release valve. Uh, I mean, um, extras of these, the adapters. Um, uh, Badger has their own size hose. I don't know why they did that. They did. So then it doesn't fit. It, I mean, hold on. Take this off. It's a it's a wrong size hose. Yeah, well, not wrong size. They have their own size, but they sell adapters and they sell uh, quick release adapters that plug right in. Let me show you. All right, here we go. This is theirs. Now it's a quick release, so it fits perfectly into their special size. But the quick release is a standard across the board. See that? So you grab that. And now it fits in all quick release adapters. So that's what I did. I got that for my badgers, these little adapters. And then they also sell one that makes it to the size of a 1 8 And then from the 1 8 you put in one of these. But that's a badger. It's got its own. I don't know why they did that, but they did. All right, let's put this back. All right, without getting too much more in the weeds here, let's go on to the moisture trap that you'll see on the end of my other one, my hose. That's the moisture trap. Now, if your air compressor doesn't have it, you need this on the end of your air of your hose. Coming out of the compressor, it traps moisture, and then you release the moisture if you capture any by pushing this in. And maybe once a week, you'll actually see moisture. I don't get a lot of moisture where I live. Depends where you live. It's environment, really. I'll show you what I mean. By on the end of the hose, I'm reaching across. Here's my other hose. This is attached to my smaller compressor. And there is, on top, I just attached the quick release. So I'd screw this into the hose and up here. Now, I don't really need this because I have one on my compressor, but I like it because it was these are inexpensive, these are under 10 bucks. And it like adds like kind of like a handle. See it? And I got used to it when I was testing one. And because of that, I left it on. <laughs> so I have two 
two moisture traps, one off of the compressor, one on my hand. You know, now my my fortress from uh, Harbor Freight doesn't have uh, a moisture trap, so you can use that for that. So you'll need it for that one, depending on your compressor. Make sure you got a moisture trap at seven or eight bucks, whatever this was. I like it because it kind of it's it's a nice handle, it's a nice grip for me. All right, there you go. Now the hose is a standard one eighth hose. If you got a compressor, it probably comes with it. If an airbrush compressor, if not, this is the size you're going to need. I'll show you the compressor when we reach the booth. Now let's go over the ba basics that I like to keep on my bench for cleaning the airbrush. And this is, I use these every day, quick cleanings. I don't have to go deep cleaning. We're not going to break down these airbrushes for you. I'm just going to show you how to paint and how to clean it out. Now, these are my favorite cotton swabs. All right? These, let me show you. They're not really, see it? They're not really fibers. They're, they're really tight wound, so you don't get any shredding. There's none on the end of that one. This one has a rounded end and a pointed end. Now, these come in really good and handy when you want to get in, and you can get around here without really uh, breaking it down, and then I switch it over to the round end. If I got paint on the cup, I just go around like that. And that's these are great to have. They come like hundreds in a package for really low money. I keep this... I had these for like months. They last forever. So these are a must have. I love these things. That's number one. All right. No. Hold on, guys. I'm marking off as I go here. All right. Number two. These will come when you buy accessories kits or if you buy uh, your airbrushes from Spray Gunner. And Spray Gunner also sells on Amazon. If you see these in a the package, you know where it came from. These are too big. We're only going to use this one. All right. And this lets you go in. I dip it in some uh, acetone or some lacquer thinner, and I go all the way through. All right? And it cleans everything out beautiful without having to break down the airbrush. People say that it, it's going to mark it up inside. It, it, I haven't had a problem. I'm sure uh, Spray Gunner, who's the expert of all experts on airbrushing, um, they wouldn't include these if they were bad. Now, it's got the fuzzies all around it, so when you're pushing it in, the, the metal really doesn't hit. It stays within itself here and it really does a great job these are invaluable look how many I have I'll tell you my airbrushes I have now those will also come included I'll show you right now in your cleaning jar two types of cleaning jar here's this one and there's this one alright this is my favorite it's really let's push this back so you guys can see it really thick glass look at the glass it's heavy and uh, it's got a filter they both have filters. Did a filter pad? So when you're blowing in, it's not shooting just back out. It captures it through the filter. They both have holders. All right? This is when you have to build when you get it. And this is so it doesn't tip over. But let me show you. See it? It'll hold your airbrush. So you can actually keep this at your booth as your holder. Or you can come in here. And then when you go to clean it out, you're going to clean it out. It captures all the... Uh, acetone or whatever you're spraying through there and then here now this one won't hold this airbrush and that's why I use this one the most it, there, no yeah it's just not made for this however this one will work perfectly with the uh, the badger and most of the others it's because of the Mac valve you know and then you clean her out and you can actually leave it there if you want but this one has a separate one and then you go in to clean I like this one personally. I'll put links for both. And I think they both come with the accessory packages, meaning, you know, this stuff, the cleaning stuff. They uh, come with a nice package. They're really inexpensive. I don't, they're not even 15 bucks. But uh, I'll put links to both. And um, this one, I'm not sure if the red cap has shown up, but it's yellow and black one. And I checked on it, same one, just the cap is different. So if you see when I give you the link and it's yellow, it's, it's the same one. You know? But this is my favorite. And uh, a lot of times, guys would just clean it in the spray booth and uh, don't even use these. So it depends how, uh, how you want to go, right? It depends on how you want to go. All right, let me get these out of the way. Oh, and you want to put water in the bottom. See it? The water captures all the spray dust, and it makes it much easier to keep the jar and you want to keep it clean and nice. It doesn't matter. I mean, you can load it up with paint if you want. But uh, it stops a lot of the gassing, and, and it cuts down on what comes out through the filter end. That's what the water is for. It's a recommendation. My dad taught me years ago, use water, and I do.
All right. Okay. Here we go. We're going to show you. Okay, we did the cotton swabs. The dentals. Now, this is the same idea as these, except you get these at CVS and whatnot. Matter of fact, here's a CVS brand. These, look at these. These are dental for your teeth, but you can get them in different sizes. Look at that, nice and fine. And this lets you get in. Yeah, matter of fact, I'll do this. I'll pull this needle out. Now there's no needle in here. All right, here we go. Look at this. Right in, right to the front. So we're right up front. We've got some thinner in there. When we go to clean it, you twist it out, you clean it. You can even bend it and go back this way into the airbrush. That's what these are for. There's different sizes and uh, absolutely uh, wonderful. I'll put a link below for these two. These are invaluable to me. I use them every day along with everything else I showed you. Now, with this out, I'm going to show you there's two type of nozzles. All right? This nozzle where you need a wrench to remove it. See, it's very fine. But I don't have to pull this out very often, maybe once or twice a year to clean, keep it clean. Um, but it's a pain to pull out because you need a wrench to remove it. This has a whole different system. This uses like the Iowata system, which is a single nozzle. See it? Now with this one, we can really clean it. But I find this system gets a little dirtier, but it's easier to clean. And that's what I meant by we're going to go right through here. Let's see if I can get the lighting on this. There you go. See it? I'll put some thinner in here or acetone, and I'll go right through. And once it's clean, I know I cleaned it all out. But that's why uh, these are two different. I'm going to show you the two different styles. So to put this back together, oh, I'll show you how I clean out the nozzle. See this? And it's usually pretty clean anyway, but that's what these uh, little things are for. You go in here, you clean it right out. All right. Here we go. Let's put it back. Simple nozzle setup. Just go right on the top. It's a cone. Screws right in. No wrench required. It's tough because of where I'm sitting behind the camera. Give me one second, guys. Hold on. Hold on, guys. I'll get it. It fell out. All right. Here we go. We can do this. We can do this. It's easy. There we go. <laughs> I just had to take my... The camera's between me and the bench, so it's tough, you know. There it is. It's all set. Now we're going to take this back in because it has a cutout back. We don't have to remove the entire back on this particular airbrush. Every airbrush is different. Make sure it goes all the way to the front. Lock her in. We're ready to go. All right. All right. That's the dental cleaners. All right. Now, here we go. Now we're going to go on to how I mix my paint. And that is the cups. And these cups mean a lot to me. Let me show you why. We'll take this. We'll take a toothpick. How about we'll take a toothpick? These are bad. These are the ones I started using, and they have these notches in the bottom. Can you see these notches? So I was putting paint in, and I start staring it. Can you, look, it broke the toothpick. And you can hear it knocking. And that was shooting the paint. It was flying out. And I bought another set, and they had the same thing, these stupid notches. So I started buying Dixie Cups. And these, and I knew there had to be a cheaper way, and uh, there is. And it's these. These have no notches in the bottom. Ready? This is the cup you want. They come in big sleeves. They're cheap. They last forever. You can also use a glass one over and over, and you have to clean it out every night. Um, I do that, too, but when I'm filming, I do a lot of stuff. I'll use these, and they're, they're just the best. These are the cups you have to have. Get these out of here. I can't stand them. Actually, that batch just went in the garbage. <laughs> so, there you go. All right, that's the cups. Now, for blending them, I like to use these coffee stirrers. Also, dirt cheap, and you get a lot in a package. Hold on. That's half the package I've used a little bit. Not even quite half. Look how many. Now, what you do is you're going to cut them in half. So, let me get my utility one here. And that's what I do. I cut them in half. All right? Try not to. Don't break them in half. And let me show you why. Ready? Because you end up with these feelers, and sometimes they they dust out, and they end up getting in the paint. Don't break them in half. Just sit there and cut a few in half, 
maybe daily when you start to do your, you don't have to do all of them. You know, I, I do these as I need them. When you guys see me on video, I get on before and I cut about four of them. Now, it's still deep enough. It's perfect. And you've doubled. If you get 1,000, you got 2,000. So you're going to last uh, just about a modeler's lifetime. So, yep, these are my coffee stairs. I will have links to everything below. Make no mistake. All right, let's get that out of the way. Pipettes. I love these pipettes. I can use regular eyedroppers, but I love these. They also come in a massive bag, real cheap, and uh, they last forever. You can clean them out. I clean some of mine out, and uh, sometimes I don't. If I'm really going through a, a test, you don't. it's not going to break your heart for tossing them because they're about uh, half a cent each. And uh, these are my favorite pipettes. I use it to pull the thinner out of my bottles. And uh, sometimes if I want just a few drops of paint, I use this also. They're marked. If you want to put a paint ratio, 50-50. Also, the cups are marked if you want to go 50-50. When you're first beginning, I, I do I thin my paints now by eye. But uh, you get used to it. That's for sure. All right. Here's my stand. I do like this stand quite a bit. It's on. I got this one on Amazon because it holds all of my brushes because of the Mac valve. It cuts out the bottom. Now, it won't hold this one because it's gigantic. For that, I have a different airbrush stand. I will show you that now. And you can also use the cleaning pot, which I showed you earlier. And this is a Harbor Freight Special. But they also have this on Amazon, so I'll put a link up for this too. And this will hold this, but it also has this upper one. And you can adjust it. This tips back and forth. It spins. It's got suction cups. It's nice. This is one of the few ones that will hold this particular airbrush because of the size of it. And I can come in here and then tip it forward a little bit. See that? And it keeps the cup straight when I go to fill it up. So there's a few stands out there. And... Uh, the one I use in my booth, I'll show you that now, is magnetic. My booth is made of metal. See the magnet? And this is made by GSI Creo, so it holds all of their brushes plus every other brand. It's cut out, so it works well with the Mac valve. And that works. Yeah, you don't really, really need the magnet, but it helps that my booth is made of steel and it locks right in. So, there you go. Everybody's always asking me about these these are made by hobby mio these stands i use them because they display great when i'm doing a video but you can't you, you right now you just can't get them um so i don't like to <laughs> I, they're in my videos because of the, they serve a purpose but uh, you know i want another five or six of these things and they're not cheap they're 15 bucks before shipping so uh but they're not out there i can't find another company that makes them uh hobby mio says they will be coming back soon but they're working on it hobby mio seems to be behind in all sorts of productions but uh, there you go that's the different stands that I have now in the corner you're gonna see this this is a single action airbrush meaning I'm pushing it down like a spray can the paint and the air is coming out there's no pulling back nothing it's just all at once you can't really get fine details you don't have much control over it the only way you adjust the paint is by turning the needle back and forth here till you get the pattern you want and then you go ahead in and uh, it does a little bit of because it's all at once so you got to make sure when you start you're nowhere near the model then come across it's like having a spray gun is what it's like and then when you're at the booth you got to get to the right pattern you want and then just go ahead and do it um, the needle just pops right out very easy to clean not a lot of mechanisms involved in this however this is around 80 bucks these are my GSI Creos the point two and the point three are like 85 and 90 bucks I mean the within five and ten dollars of this one so, just go right ahead and grab this one, and I would personally skip right over that, and uh, and stick with a dual action. But I had it there just so I can show you guys that. And uh, finally, at the bench, before we start mixing our paint, this is the mask I use. It's a Rhino. Let me see if I can get you. Oh, I can't see the name. Where's the name? Oh, Rhino. Rhino. And uh, oh, there's the logo. The Rhino logo right there. It fits perfectly on my face. It lets me wear my glasses, which are right here. I use reading glasses, not regular glasses. And it goes over the back of your head. It's very comfortable. These filter pads are interchangeable. They pop off right here. And then you can buy them, but they last a really long time because the paint we use are not super strong paints like auto paint. Um, they're, they're much more milder than that. But uh, this is a great one. This is I don't even think this is 20 bucks. 
and um, well worth it at that price. Uh, very comfortable. I'll put a link below for this too. Uh, a lot of people don't see it because I'm not on camera, but that's the mask uh, that I use quite often. All right. Now, I'm going to pause the camera. I'm going to put the paint out in front. We're going to get to painting. All right, guys. Here we are. Here is all of the solvent-based paints I have in my collection. Not all of them. Each brand. I have almost full collections of each brand. These represent each brand. These are all solvent-based. And all of these, all of them, as I reach back, can be thinned with just that. Every one of these in front of you can be thinned using Mr. Color Leveling Thinner. I bought a case of this. This is my favorite thinner. And um, this is a must-own as much as it is the airbrush in and of itself. Every one of these in front of you, including the enamels, can be thinned using this. All right? We have Tamiya. It says acrylic, but it's not. It's an acrylic solvent paint. I think it's an acrylic lacquer. There's your solvent. You look for the flame logo that tells you it's a solvent, not an acrylic. This is my favorite acrylic for airbrushing. No flame logo at all on it. This is another video, but if you're going to airbrush, I like Vallejo Game and Model Air. That's the brand I like for acrylics. Other than that, everything takes a little bit of work. Anyway, let's go. Tamiya. The acrylic uh, solvent base there. This is acrylic. This is the Tamiya lacquer. All right, Mr. Color Aquios. Born paints. This is humble enamels. They come in a little tin. Matter of fact, Ravel enamels come in a tin, but I took them out of the tin and took the tin and poured them into this. Made my own label. But these are uh, enamels. Oh, there it is. I put even enamel right on it. So these are kind of the same. Uh, Tamiya enamels, testers, that's an enamel, AK, real color, real colors, good paints, Jump Wind, one of my new favorites, Jump Wind, finishers, it's a Japanese brand, not the easiest to get, true color, these are made in America, these are, I have the full line of these auto colors, high gloss, torch red, beautiful colors, they're made for, uh, Painting car kits. Dispay. Your standard Mr. Color. I think this is what we'll use in our demo. I'm going to use whatever's common and easiest to get. Gaia Notes, which suddenly just became easier to get. I have a new supplier for these coming up soon. I'll be going over that with you guys. My Mecha Empire enamels. This is an acrylic enamel. These are my paints. All right. Across the back, let's keep going. E7, that's the name of the brand. E7, oops, if I can show you right there. E7 color. Moto, this is Moto Paints, Aurora Red. Oh, it's beautiful. Sunin 7, that's right, that's the brand. Sun and 7. Oh, there it is. Let me show you. Sun and 7. Uh, I haven't tested these yet. I've been working on them behind the scenes. The test is coming very soon. A-OK, -okay, Silver Oak, A-OK, -okay, Silver Oaks. Splash Paints, these are made for cars. Look at the Pearl X. A lot of these have a ball bearing in them, some don't. You know, it depends on the brand. That's Splash Paint. Actually, this is Splash Paint. I just did this on camera. This is a color change car colors. Look at that. Happens to be in the background. Odin Con, orange yellow. Hobby Meal, MRP, acrylic lacquers, right there in the front, acrylic lacquer, all right, these are made in Slovakia, I believe, yep, SMS, made in Australia, great paints, I got a hot test of these coming up very soon, Street Blisters, they make car colors, Zerk, I found a source for these, not for the full lineup, but at least I got some. And uh, so far, so good. The chroma is really nice. It says acrylic based, but it isn't. It's um, um, it's a solvent. Hold on. My Mecha Empire. These are my uh, lacquers. I have a ball bearing in mine. I just spent, said ball bearing. Look how pretty. What is this one called? Deep Purple. There you go. 
and uh, Custom Creative. This is their solvent. Look at the size of these. I got these because I think they were on sale, so I grabbed the whole bunch. Look at that. I haven't even tested these yet. Anyway, that's the solvents you have to choose from. There's more out there. Depends where you live in the world. Uh, for me, this is what I've been able to get. Some of these, like the Street Blisters, are from overseas. Uh, these are not made in, uh, available in America. I had one of those out of Poland. and um, But the Born just became available in America. Jump Win not too recently. Uh, it was I mean, So you can't get them. They're starting to show up more and more. But that's what you got to choose from as far as a solvent paste, paint. And that's what today's test is going to be with the airbrush. We're going to use a solvent paste. I'm going to use Mr. Color. These are about 3 bucks a jar. Readily available wherever you are. So I am going to go ahead and use this as our demo of how to brush, paint and how to clean out your airbrush. All right? So let me get everything I need. Let me pause the camera, and we'll thin the paint. All right, guys, here we are. Now, for thinning this, these lacquers across the board start at 50-50. One part paint, one part thinner. You can even go further than that. You can do three parts paint and seven parts thinner. You can thin most of your lacquers and enamels way out, like dishwater, and it won't matter. Sometimes you can even get better performance the thinner you get them. So, here we go. Let's zoom in a little bit here. I'm going to dial this down. There we go. All right. So, I already shook it up. I'll show you what we can do. You can shake it up with this $100 unit, which is fantastic, but a little overkill for some, unless you're like me, and uh, the hobby is practically your business. Yeah, you're going to shake them up. Don't break your wrist. All right? Or, let me get this out of the thing, weighs five pounds. You can go with this. This is my Badger. Oop, upside down. My Badger paint mixer. And this thing works terrific. You go in all your cups. Fifteen bucks. Fantastic. It's all you need. Um, unless you're really going to start doing collecting paints and a lot of paint like I do, then I recommend uh, the four E's, the big one I just showed you. But that's what this is. It comes with the batteries too, I think. And then uh, you blend it up and you're good to go. I already did that off camera. Here we go. Now, I'm not going to guess this out too much. I mean, I am going to guess it. I'm just going to go ahead and the trick is to put the stick against it and you're going to pour and it guides itself down the stick. See that? And it leaves it as clean as can be, but you have to, have to keep your eggs, and you got to keep your threads of your jars clean. That's how you keep the paint lasting a long time. This jar is like three or four years old, and looks like the day I bought it. All right. And there we go. Now, 50-50. See how thick it is? I put up the side to show you guys how thick. All right, like molasses almost. I'm going to go ahead with our leveling thinner. I'm sorry, guys. I'm a little close. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and use what I recommend. The dropper, the pipette. Now, you guys are just starting off. You can use the pipette marks, or you can use the marks on the cup. Either way, whatever you're comfortable with. Then I'm telling you, after about a week of spraying, You'll be just using your eye. Now you're going to scrape as well as you can. This is why I told you not to use those other cups. You just want to use these with the nice smooth bottom. All right. I'm going to pull out the camera a bit. All right. Let me tip her back up. Everything's done on the fly. There we go. Uh, it keeps adjusting, so I don't want the camera to focus on some stuff. But I want it to just focus on the paint. There we go. All right, there you go. They call it the uh, proverbial skim milk. It can even go thinner than this if you want. You do the old drag test. I drag it. It runs down, but it still leaves the color behind on the cup. See it? You drag it. It leaves the color behind as it runs back down. And that's the test, right? Now, to show you, I'm not kidding. We can thin it even further than that. You know, at that point, we're just wasting thinner. But I want to show you how thin you can make this stuff. And it's still going to spray beautifully. Matter of fact, if it's dull, add more thinner. 
and your paint should come out shiny if it's a shiny glossy paint to start with there you go right it's still going to leave the trail behind all right let's grab our we'll use our gsi creos for this and uh we'll head over to the booth and i'll show you how to paint and i'm going to show you how to clean it all right guys here we are at the booth for this i'm going to be using my uh Tutti air compressor. I got this at, well, I got it on Amazon, but it's sold by uh, and made by Spray Gunner. I also have a Fortress. And um, I use both back and forth. This is a two gallon, um, relatively quiet. It fills up and it lasts a really long time. It doesn't have a uh, moisture trap, so I built one in up here. So it comes out of there into the moisture trap with the gauge and from here I airbrush hose comes off but this one we will use this just to show you guys because I want to show you how to adjust your air pressure so I'm going to turn this on All right the brush is attached right there and you're going to see it's building up its pressure let me zoom in hold on there we go Sorry for all the noise, I got this right up against it, but it's as quiet as can be. Alright, I'm going to pause this and let it reach, and I'm going to show you how you're going to adjust it. Okay guys, we have reached, and here's how you're going to dial it in. You're going to pick this up. Alright, and you can dial it up. See the needle's going up. And we're going to dial it, you can go down, but you're not going to see where it's going down until you press in the airbrush. And see the needle adjust see it goes up and down when you're holding it in that's where it's settling in this is a very good air compressor because the needle doesn't move far once I hit it so that is locked in at 20 I don't know if you can see it it's on the 20 the glass is a little dirty right there I wish I had it clean but it's on 20 right there that's 20 so, when you want to go with 15, you want to go, the, the Badger actually works with 15 PSI. The manual tells you that. So you pick this up, we're going to dial it down and see where we end up. That's around 12, see it? But see how it's not adjusting much? It's a good compressor. Pick it up, dial it once, there's your 15. It locks right in. But we want 20. Now we're going to dial it, it's going to go on its own, ready? There's 20. You can go up a little bit because it's going to adjust down about a half a point, so to speak. We're locked in. All right, let me put the compressor on the floor and let's spray. All right, guys, here we are. Nothing in the cup. We're going to use the GSI Creos. Here it is, that thinned out purple made by the same company. We don't need much. We're just going to show you. There we go. You're going to test it. Now, you can always test it on a piece of paper. Let me show you what I mean. Keep scrap paper by, and you can see and practice before you actually hit your kit what you're going to be, uh, what your results are going to be. So you pull back, and this is where you get used to it. See, I'm pulling back very little. See, here, I'll spray my arm, nothing, no paint, until I stop pulling back. Yeah. And that's when you can start, and then you go further away. Or come in three inches is usually a good barometer to start with and it depends on uh, the, the brand and whatnot everyone acts a little different I'm just giving you the basics as to uh, thinning it and cleaning it so but a piece of paper is good to have also if you want put some thinner or acetone before you even put paint and, or even water and just practice what you what you want to do I mean to get the feel of the brush well let's go ahead and let's paint we we'll use a spoon for this. We're just going to show you quickly how we're going to paint. I like to get just the air and blow the dust off the piece. All right, here we go. Now you're going to push in. You're going to get some air. Start off the piece. All right. Now a lot of people want you to keep your hand on it all the time. I've gotten used to not because. Um, I didn't want the compressor coming on all the time when I was filming my videos and I've gotten so used to it but you should keep it down and then just move back and forth as you need it but I haven't had trouble either way I really haven't but you want to start off of the piece alright 
meaning spray off the piece and then come into the piece. Um, solvents are very forgiving. I didn't put enough in. Solvents are very forgiving, um, meaning they practically go on great every single time. Now, I like to do my quick method. I'll show you it in a second. All right. I'll show you what I mean. I did it in a video recently, how I get that glass smooth finish. I go about three or four inches away. All right. And I go across very fast. And a lot of people say, how are you doing it so fast? And that's why I made that other video. What I do is I kind of build a base for the next layer to grip to. These lacquers dry very quickly. Now you can also flash it off, meaning you're going to blow some cool air on it. And that's what we're doing here. There's no paint. We're just... And right now that baby is ready to go. It's dry. So we're going to hit it with a second layer. All right, flash it again. A little splotchy. Now the final layer, closer. I'm going to cut this distance in half. If it's four inches, go to two, and going to go across slower. Not so slow that you're splopping the paint on. You're just going to get a rhythm, just a little bit slower. And you go like a ladder, like you're going down a set, a set of stairs. And you're going to overlap each layer. All right, we can do it again if we want to get a real thick, even coat. It's a little slower. It's a little slower than I was doing it. And there you go. Look at that. It's like glass. And this will work. This method will work with everything I showed you, the thinning, the, the way I'm spraying it. You will get your own technique. This is just the basics to get you guys started. And... Uh, there you go. Now, no paint's coming out. It's a mess inside. Can you see it? Now we're going to clean it. Let me go get all the materials we need to clean it. Okay, when I clean mine, I use both. My dad taught me this, and uh, another sprayer taught me this, too. They use acetone at the very end. I don't know why. I think it dries quicker, but I've gotten used to it. But I use lacquer thinner, and I use acetone. Now, I've labeled my jars, and this is what I use. Huh? Ten bucks a can, lasts me a, quite a few months. And here's the acetone, you get these anywhere. Walmart even has these. But I get these at my local Lowe's and Home Depot. That's what I use. I got these stickers labeled, and I just label them so I know which is which. These keep it airtight. These little mason jars, they're great. And uh, yeah, so we're going to start with some lacquer thinner. Gonna sum it here. Now my method is a little different. I like to flush it in and out using my pipette. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm, I'm like flushing it in and out. All right. I keep a can behind me. Get the excess out. Can you see what I'm doing? I'll take the dirty. All right. Put it in that jar I keep behind me. All right. Look, it's almost clean. Now this is how I use my two-sided. I go in here, I swirl it. I use my pointy one to get in the little edges there. Here is how you clean out a GSI Creo. So you're gonna take the nozzle, and you're gonna go back a quarter of a turn, and that's it. Now I'm gonna pull back, nothing's gonna come out, it's gonna bubble up. That's it. You don't have to cover the front. Now with the uh, Badger and some of the other brands, you have to cover the front to get your back flush. Not with this. Now it's cleaning, it's back flushing and cleaning out most of the, the nozzle and everything. It works great. You can see all the dirty come out. All right, let me dump this. Hold on. I can actually just go ahead, keep a paper towel, just dump it out right there. All right, actually, I would like to take my finger and rub in here. And now we're going to sock it in again. You can see it's still purple coming out. This is how you know when you're getting it clean. And, uh, and I go to the acetone, and I do the same thing. Don't have to cover the front, I just am. All right? 
and dump it out. And what happens is when you do your final blast, if you're coming in, if it's coming out clean, it's clean. Look, I'm spraying. By the way, can you see it? And you're clean. Now I like to leave a little bit of acetone in there, like I said, and get in there with my uh, pointy end. And once you do this, you can go on to the next color. All right now. I did it in the booth because I'm demoing it. Some guys don't have a booth. Depends where they're spraying. What you're going to do is, you know, I'll actually do it on the screen here. You know, see it? It's going through. You're just going to put it in your jar. This will capture everything in here, filtering it out here. You can almost see the smoke. No, you can't see it. And that's it. it sounds like it's done. It is done. And you are clean. Now let's look at the needle. When I am done at the end of my sessions, I'll do another color now. This is ready to go. It won't leave any trace. I will pull the needle out, and I will go in with this. All right, we'll dip it in some acetone or lacquer, and we'll go right in. See that? It goes right in like you're cleaning your, your teeth. <laughs> Little tight spaces. And then you can bend it and go the opposite way. It actually went in the opposite way. Look at that. If in case you get anything back there, you probably won't. If you dabble this and it comes out purple, you know it's dirty back there. But... Uh, that's what I would do at the end of my session. I'll pull the needle out. I will rub the needle, make sure it's clean. And we're gonna go back in. We are good to go. I'm gonna push on the needle to make sure it's snug. Finger tighten, don't go ridiculous. And that's it. And that is it. It's absolutely clean, you're ready to go. You can go all week like this, and uh, once a week, twice a week, I'll go in and pull it apart. Uh, that's a whole other video, breaking them down. You use your manual to see what you want to do, you know, to break it down like that. But, uh, yeah, that that is it. Now you're ready for the next color. You're just going to repeat the steps I just showed you. I'll show you quickly the badger because it's a little different process, and then we'll wrap this up. Badger is right behind me, guys. Here's the badger. All right, like I said, look nice and quick into the quick release. All right, we'll go ahead again with acetone. We'll just use that just for the demo. There we go. It's the same thing. You pull back. Now, let's get this out of the way. With these, you're going to have to plug the front. So you can use your finger. Be careful if you get stabbed. You don't want that to happen. But most badgers will come with this cap. And you can put this cap over it, too. And that's how you're going to get the back flush. See it? Don't pull all the way back. You get a burst of air to shoot in your face. You know, please, be careful. Goggles if you must. But I'm barely pulling back. And that's how you clean that out. And that's it. And the same thing right in here. This one fits every type of uh, spray of airbrush because this is a very wide front. This one has a skinnier front end. And um, that's it. Same technique. You're going to pull the needle out, go in. But... Uh, a couple of back flushes. Dump it out. All right, back flush. Then dump it out. Don't keep the the don't blast the dirt through it again. When you back flush it, you want to dump it out like I did into my little paper towel here. See it? That way, when you blast it through again, you got most of the dirt out. And that's how you do it. You're ready to go on to the next color. All right, guys. Let's head back to the bench. Let's wrap this up. All right, guys. Here we are back at the bench. And look at that. Yes. It's that simple. All right. Now, um, just want you guys to know, there's about three minutes between when I just cleaned the airbrush and sat at this bench, and this is dry. So you wait no time at all when you're working with solvents. No time at all. Uh, enamels take a little longer to dry. However, if you thin them with a lacquer thinner... Oh, i put the cap on that, man. Look at that. We sprayed a little bit. And... Uh, if you're working with a lack of thinner, it's going to dry that much faster. You're going to probably cut your drying time in half with an enamel. But there you go. It's already dry. It's perfect. It's like glass. And uh, if you have any questions, you know, let me know below. If you want more personal questions, join my Patreon. I'll put a link for that, too. And I can answer your questions directly and go on video and maybe uh, teach you a few things in video format, too, or answer your questions in video format. But um, that is it. This video... 
pretty much isn't for many of my viewers who have already delved into the art of airbrushing. This is just to answer many questions that I get. I figured I'd put it all in one, the thinning it, the type of airbrush I use, and the cleaning of the airbrush. It's a full step process and you know it's a longer video but I, mean, I hope a lot of you guys can use this as a reference. If you follow what I just showed you you shouldn't have a problem. It's really easy. It's just getting the feel of everything. Like I said, pour some water in it or some thinner and just get used to holding it and how much paint's going to come out. Then go ahead and put your paint in, get a piece of paper, and then go ahead and get a bunch of spoons to practice on. You'll have it down before you know it. Once I, uh, once I upgraded to a better airbrush, I had a lot of trouble with the cheap, these cheap $20 airbrushes on Amazon. Uh, I, I tested the best of the best I could for the low-priced airbrushes. But once I personally, years ago, stepped up to a brand name. This is my first good brand name airbrush. I went from a Neo, which personally I, I think is junk, but that's me. I wanna, I personally don't think they should stick their name on that airbrush. I think it's uh, it's just the I think it's the crappy ones they have on Amazon and they stick Iwata on it. For some reason they call it Neo, so they're kind of not attached to it, but they are. It's theirs. I didn't like it. When I switched to this Creos, everything changed for me. That's how much better this airbrush is. And then I started collecting all these airbrushes and they've all been great so far and that is all that is it guys any questions right below leave a like it helps quite a bit subscribe if you haven't already i have a lot of stuff coming up i have a beautiful uh set of new colors from uh sms they sent me a new chrome too check this out look part of their chrome series the hyper chrome dark tone so this is going to be awesome they just uh i just got that bottle in and uh, a bunch of other colors, and some of these I haven't tested at all yet, so that's coming up too. Let me know which ones you guys want to see, because um, I'll push some to the front of the line. Uh, and uh, that is all. That's it, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope this video helps you guys with all the questions you ask. Um, and after this, uh, onward and upward to testing more paints and more products. We will see you guys in the next video. Have a great rest of your week. God bless you all. You guys are the best. Have a great day.